Okay, so now what we're going to do is remove the reverse idler gear. There's these two bolts in the case. And then uh, just sort of pry it up on this with the screwdriver until it got loose. And uh, then took it off. And then the reverse gear you could just slide, you could just push off. Uh, it's not being held in by anything. There we go. Okay, so now uh, we're moving on to the main shaft. There's a snap ring on this. Take the snap ring off with some snap ring pliers. And then uh, remove the bearing. And uh, we have another little teeny snap ring on the other side of the main shaft. Take that off. Then you can remove these, uh, this thrust washer and thrust needle bearing. And uh, removing the two O-rings on the front to sort of help take things off. We have to replace them anyway. We'll replace them later. There's the thrust needle bearing. Uh, next we have fourth gear. And then we have the, uh, another needle bearing. And then the fourth gear uh, sort of sleeve. And then we have the second and fourth clutch hub, and that right there is the second gear that's still attached to it. The second gear side of the hub has two little prongs in the middle. This is the fourth gear side. We're going to take this snap, snap ring off. You see how in the middle there's no two prongs. Take the edge snap ring off, and then the clutch plates, uh, the clutch discs, and the steels come right out. There's a little spacer washer right there and the top and uh, there are the clutches and steels they were pretty burnt up um, now we're going to move to the second gear side and you see how there's those two little prongs in the middle that's how you can tell the difference we're going to take out the outer snap ring uh, remove the clutches and steels uh, this side does not have a little spacer so this is the only clutch out that doesn't have a spacer so just keep that in mind okay so now I sort of use my tool I got from the 4L60E rebuild but it's, you can easily make it, it's just a threaded rod and a plate and I sort of made my own little thing out of wood right there to compress the middle spring so I compressed it used snap ring pliers to remove the snap ring and um, then you know just loosened it up and it really it really did the job and I didn't have to buy any special tools so you could pretty much make this it's pretty easy so there's the spring and um, the washer or the snap ring I mean there's we're gonna take out the piston and uh, on the piston there are two o-rings Place the outer O ring and then the inner one. Okay, so now we're going to lube everything up, put the piston back in, uh, do it pretty gently. I like to twist it as it goes in. I don't really do it so much for this one, but the other ones I do. So Put it press gently on both sides so it goes in evenly, and um, there we go. So now we're gonna put we're gonna recompress the spring and the little um, you know, spring top that where the snap ring holds in. Uh, now this is where it got kind of tricky. This tool was kind of like it was kind of bending, and I was afraid it was gonna break, and I didn't want it to break under that much pressure. So I put a big C clamp on it to hold it. But then this, I put the C-clamp too low, and it was sort of pushing the wood blocks too close together, and I could get the snap ring off, so then I had to take off the C-clamp and sort of push back the wood and <laughs> get the snap ring off. It was definitely, I mean, it, if you're going to do this, make a better tool than I did, or, or buy the actual tool. Um, so, But after this, it, I, it worked out great. I sort of made it... That, that was sort of a dry run to get all the kinks out. So anyway, uh, we're going to do the same thing to the other side. 
you know, we're going to compress the little spring that's the clamp's in a really good spot where it's not going to push the two halves of the wood blocks together. Compress it, take off the snap ring. That one came off really easy. And then take it off. Remove the spring that in the middle. Uh, take out the piston. Had to bring it against the table a couple of times to get it out. And uh, again, replace the O-rings. And if you notice that uh, everything's, I always I clean off everything before I put the new O-rings on, and before I put everything together. Just make sure you always just clean things really well. Uh, it's just a really good habit because there's a bunch of friction material left over just from use. So we got these two seals, and I lubed it up again. This time I'm going to push it in and sort of twist it in a little bit until it gets down, and then press gently on both sides like I did before, make it evenly go down, and then I turn it. That's a good thing to do is to press down and turn to make sure it's seated properly. So now we're going to compress the spring assembly again. Uh, put the snap ring on. Make sure it's seated. Def always make sure your snap ring is fully seated. You don't want it flying off during operation. Uh, take it off. There we go. And now we're going to uh, this. Okay, so this right here is um, sort of a beveled washer. You see that beveled side? That beveled side goes towards the clutch hub. So, very important you put that in the correct orientation. So now we have the clutches and steels. There's three clutches and three steels for every hub on this transmission. And there's the uh, space plate thing. And then we're going to put the snap ring back in. And that completes this side of the hub. Now we're going to flip it over to the second gear side. This Remember, the second gear side does not have that little spacer, the little beveled spacer. It's the only clutch up without the beveled spacer. So just make sure you take note of that. Putting the clutches and steels in. And then the uh, top plate. And we got the snap ring. Okay, so now we are replacing one of the axle seals in the case. Um, I'm going to get to the other one in the next video. But So we're going to remove the big snap ring. Uh, then we're going to... I just made a little wooden circle to help press this out. Or punch it out. Whenever you're gonna hit things, especially you know, fragile things like that, just use wood, just because wood is very soft and you can still get a lot of force in. So yeah, use the same thing to, to punch it back in. Just make it flush with the case. There we go. And then we're gonna put the snap ring back on on the other side. Okay, so now we're going to remove the main shaft bearing. So we're going to expand that snap ring right there. And while it's expanded, gently tap on the bearing. And ho this one came out easy. Um, so, yeah, get it out. And the reason why we're only going to remove the main shaft is because we need to do some clearance checks in the next video. And it needs to have this, the bearing on the shaft. Um, so this is going to be the first clutch assembly. washer there and the clutches and steels these show normal wear they have a little bit of blackness in the inner diameter uh, it's definitely not burnt as burnt as the other ones were so we're gonna compress it the same way remove the snap ring take the, remove the tool and then the spring assembly Take out the pistons by dropping on the table a couple times.
and then remove the O-rings, inner and outer diameter O-rings. Um, put the new ones on after cleaning. Lube everything up again. Put the piston back in the hub. Do a little twist to put it in. Gently press on the sides to seat it in. And then uh, turn it to make sure it's seated correctly. And then we're going to recompress the spring. You know, after I, after I really got the hang of using this little tool and it was actually working very well. There we go. Alright, so now we have another beveled washer. We're going to put the beveled side towards the clutch hub. It's the same deal. clutches and steels. Again, there's three clutches, three steels for each hub in this transmission. Put the snap ring back on. We are done with first gear. Um, now we're going to do some clearance measurements. I didn't have a dial indicator, so what I did was I used my caliper, put the spike down to touch the top of the plate, and then mount, and then held the thing to the side really nicely, and then pried up with a screwdriver. I did this about three to five times, and then took an average, uh, just so I can account for any inconsistencies from any sort of slight movement. So uh, this is how I check for the specs for each clutch hub, and everything was in spec. Um, so it worked very nicely. Didn't need to get a dial indicator. But that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Slide into the clips and put our pan underneath, and then just pull.